looks all right, doesn't it? That's the new Nissan Qashqai, and it's had a big design upgrade both outside and also inside. So we're out in the south of Portugal to see whether this is gonna be a next big hit. Priced from just over 30 grand and available in mild hybrid and full hybrid forms, this upgraded Qashqai faces old rivals like the Ford Cougar and Kia Sportage, as well as premium models like the Volkswagen Tiguan and Audi Q3. Yes, that's because this new boldly designed Qashqai, designed actually in London, Nissan's European design studio over there, has a brand new face, a brand new rear, and some tech inside made by Google, which means it is a big upgrade on the very popular current or outgoing car. Now, I want to show you the details up close because they're really worth highlighting. Now, firstly, there's some cool stuff going on. There's a special manufacturing technique. I've forgotten the name of it, so we're going to put it on the screen now. And it's made this front grille a lot more aggressive. And also, that pattern carries on into the lights here. These are the day running lights. So it gives this front of the Qashqai a really different look. It's slightly less surprised, slightly more aggressive. And actually, I might as well look down here straight away. And you'll see the pattern continues into these intakes here. And then actually, the wheels as well are slightly more aggressively designed. So it's a really cool looking front end. I didn't think I'd be saying that about arguably one of the most sensible cars you can buy. And then if you come around to the side here, still got your roof racks up there, so still very usable, but you'll notice that where normally you'd expect maybe black to be, they've actually body colored it, and then they've colored other bits black, so it's giving a sporty vibe. And as you can see on this car, we've got this lovely shade of an orangey red paint with the black roof here. So it just gives the car a real pinched line, and it leads me nicely around to the tail, where we've got a totally new rear light. It's not a million you know, miles different from the old design, but actually the designer will tell you it's all new and really it's the OLED technology inside that changes it. Not only does it give you this really sharp lighting here, but it also means the tone of the red is much richer and they say much more premium because that's who they're going after. No exhaust visible here, but it gives a nice clean design at the rear and well, just a sensible, but actually now very good looking car. And yet, it's inside where I think most buyers are going to be tempted towards this car because it is a big, big change from the other one. And you're thinking, where, Sam? Well, in there, because we have Google technology. Now, that means anyone who uses a smartphone is going to be familiar with this technology. It basically means the system for maps, which obviously is quite important if you like to use SatNav. Well, it's now brilliant. I mean, Google's technology is up there with the very best. But even the rest of the system is nice. It's quick and responsive, and it'll be recognizable to Android phone users. It means some of it must be customizable, I'm told anyway, but I haven't played around with it enough. But it also means I can say this. Hey, Google, turn my cooling fan up a bit. Does that work? Sorry. I don't understand. Probably should speak in English, shouldn't I? Hey Google, turn the heating down. Got it. Turning down the temperature by two degrees. There we go. It's so easy to use these switches here, so that's basically redundant. You just do that, wouldn't you? And I'm going to call out how it, good it is to see proper switches still in this car. But at least it's nice to know if you do need to use the systems, they're good. Ah, I have spotted one issue with the infotainment system, and that is that you can wirelessly connect Android Auto, but you can't wirelessly connect Apple CarPlay. Hopefully that will come in an update, but right now I need a wire to get my phone on there. Although having said that, since Google Maps and Waze come built into the system, it's probably less of an issue for most people. Even the screen ahead of you here is lovely and sharp. This one is not new, but it's really, really good. So is the head-up display. Now, you can only see at the moment it's just displaying our speeder, but when you drive, you also get your instructions on there as well. You can see your route navigation as well, which is very useful. And I love the fact that this steering wheel, which is pretty small, but it's got a really thin rim, so it's nice and comfortable to hold. It's not thick and fat like some of these new cars. I mean, the Mini I was in recently, it's got a Honestly, the grip there is about that thick. Here it's nice and thin. It just means it feels light and it makes the whole car feel lighter. And the buttons are proper, very simple to use. Honestly, it could not be easier to understand this car. Same goes for all of the switch gear down here. And I must admit, while this clears up space, it's a bit fiddly to use this. I would much prefer, you know, uh, some of you sort of move back and forward like a lever, but it does clear up a lot of space. In this particular car, we have a wireless charging mat down there. And we've also got the fabric suede that's been introduced into the interior of the car. But you you can also get leather, which you will see shortly in the car I drive. You'll also spot that this car has a powerful Bose sound system, which comes complete with a subwoofer in the boot, and it has some nifty storage solutions, including space for your sunglasses, generous door bins, and no shortage of space around the center console, with a pair of hidden USB-C ports and a 12 volt too. The glove box isn't too shabby either. As for the back seats, well, I've set the one ahead 
how I like it. And I must say that you can notice immediately, you can notice that the floor is slightly lipped there. I'll try and show you on camera, but effectively it's flat where my feet are. And then there's a slight step. And that's because the batteries for the hybrid system go under the passenger seats ahead. Now that has no impact, no noticeable impact on your driving position. But as a rear passenger, it does mean that my toes are pointing upwards into the seat. Now I've got the seat set as low as it can go. So uh, a lot of people have theirs higher, but it does mean that if I tilt this sideways, you can start to see that it's not got the most leg room as a result. Some cars allow you to get your feet right under there and stretch them out, but it's more than adequate, especially if you carry kids or teenagers in the back. And they should be quite happy as well because you've got a pair of USB-C ports down there to go with their individual vents and a decent amount of storage space. You've got traditional storage in the back of the seat here. I say traditional because it seems to be lost from a couple of brands these days. You've got more space in there and and then you've even got some door pockets there which are definitely big enough for your reusable bottles plus as far as headroom is concerned let me show you there i've got a good amount of space there and i've also got a good amount of space to the middle passenger that middle seat is quite wide but if you haven't got anyone in the middle seat well you can fold down this middle armrest here get a couple of extra cup holders and it's nice and comfortable as well for your arm but if you do have a middle passenger, who I will demonstrate now, then you'll spot the central tunnel here it means my feet don't fit. My feet are size 11s if you're wondering, and they don't fit in this gap. If you've got smaller feet, you probably will fit, but mine don't, so I'd have to have my feet either side here. So as a five-seater with you know, taller than average people in the back, it might be a bit snug. But for kids in the back, I think it's gonna be a pretty comfortable experience. And that'll be doubly so if they're really little kids. Look, the Isofix bar is in easy reach. Now on this end design trim, we have an electric tailgate. And if you look inside, this is a big, big boot. I mean, it's the same, not as anything has changed. But if you're new to the Qashqai, you will be impressed to see that this floor lifts up in two halves. So that's nice and versatile. And actually the whole thing can come out as well, making the boot considerably larger um, so if I take all of that out you have a lot of room and if I lift up this floor here you'll spot that we've got our subwoofer for this top grade Bose sound system as well plus a few extra bits like tools and a tire filler kit there's also some usable space down there same goes for this bit down here and you can fold down the seats in two halves plus it's quite handy to see that if you need to charge anything in the back or if you're running a trailer you can plug it in here for your 12 volt and you've got little hooks here for any shopping bags right. plus with a tough plastic lip that makes the floor flat here dogs should be happier to hop in as for the towers out there, it's true that the e-power hybrid we're driving can only tow 750 kilograms of brake trailer, but thankfully, the mild hybrid version can manage 1.5 tonnes. Before we jump behind the wheel, don't forget when searching for your next car, check out cinch.co.uk or download our app where you can favourite them and even keep an eye on whether the model you're after comes into stock. So the changes to the powertrain, well, there are actually no changes to the powertrain. This remains effectively an electric car in the way it feels and drives with a petrol engine to keep that battery nice and top top. And so that means, like before, this is a nice, smooth power delivery car, really responsive on the accelerator. And it means you can take advantage of one pedal driving. And if you're not familiar with that, that's effectively where, as the battery takes energy back from the spinning wheels, it actually helps you to slow the car down. So on a, a mountainous road like we are on today in Portugal, I'm not really using the brakes. So that's a really big advantage, but it's also an advantage if you're an urban driver as well. It's actually quite a joy to use in certain settings. But handily, if you're not into that, you can, if you just press the C button down here, switch it off. And then now I'm forced to using the brake again because the car rolls like an automatic. So this is a versatile car as it was before. The ride as well, I have to say these roads in Portugal are definitely better than your average Brit British B road. But there are a few bumps here and there and I can confirm that it remains a good riding car, this Qashqai. I mean, it's definitely not a sports car and that's a good thing. It's not trying to pretend to be one like some of its rivals. It is just content in being easy and light at the controls and just being a nice, comfortable place to be. It's definitely not the plushest car. There are some Citroens out there with some pretty complicated but very effective suspension systems that will iron out the bumps a little bit better. But honestly, overall, this is a great place to sit and you could easily spend hours and hours either on the motorway or indeed driving down a Portuguese mountain road. Another good thing as well is the driver assistance features, which are actually quite useful here. They're not overly intrusive in some settings. So for example, if I tread onto the white line here, 
here I'm actually getting a small vibration through the wheel but it's not fighting me to push back into the lane well you can actually dive into the menus and for example switch off the speed limit alert and other systems which can become a little bit annoying and when you turn the car off and get back in it will save your settings so you're not forever having to dive into menus can also demonstrate the performance this thing now we're heading downhill so it's slightly advantageous for the car but if we find a little straight here you put your foot down it really gets moving and there's no delayed acceleration thanks to that electric delivery so where other cars i mean the one we've driven recently is the renault rafale with its hybrid powertrain that has a real nice kick of electric but then there's a hesitation from the gearbox as the petrol engine takes up the rest of the load that is not the case in this Qashqai. So that's a not very British experience of the new Nissan Qashqai, but we've learned a few key things. It's much better looking. The tech in the interior is really bang up today and very nice to use, but it's still got the right amount of analog as well. It drives just as well and it's just as practical as before. If you're not sold though, check out these great alternatives.